Hi folks, welcome to our groundwater model here, our lovely model of how water flows through our ground, right? Um, let me just kind of orientate you here to what we are looking at. Let's see, it's a pretty good view, I believe. All right, so up here, we have our unconfined aquifer. And as you can see, we have uh, several different features here. There's a lake, there's a river, some springs, and then all of these little tubes going down in here, these are wells. So if you're on well water, right, there's wells drilled down into the ground to, to collect water from the ground, right? Um, if you're uh, using your own personal home well, you're most likely in an unconfined aquifer up here. A lot of city wells will drill down into our confined aquifer and of course the difference being uh, the confined aquifer is separated from the surface environments by this layer here known as an aquitard or aquaclude an impermeable layer right so uh, the idea here is there should be very little transmission or none at all in real life, right? I mean, this is just a, a tiny model, so there are some seepages. But uh, there should be no transmission above and below um, this line, right? So for the first part of this lab, what it asks you to do is determine the... Um, hydraulic gradient is the difference in height between the water and these wells. And we're looking at wells... Three. I'm going to just put a little die in here so you can see how high the water is in that well. And well four. Notice these are both in our unconfined aquifer, right? And so there, hopefully, you can see a little better some of that red dye in those wells here, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the height from the top here, nice flat surface, down to the wells. And then using the difference in height, right, we can get, or, or the difference in, in this, this height here, we can get that change in, in elevation between those two layers. So let me get that out and let me measure here. So, for your records, well three is 4.4. .4 centimeters below the top 4.4 centimeters below the top that's well three well four on the other hand as you can see is quite a bit lower here make sure we can still see it well four is quite a bit lower here and from the top i'm measuring him at about 6.4 centimeters 6.4 centimeters for well four now you should be able to calculate right your hydraulic gradient, right? The difference in elevation that's shown in the lab, right? And from there, and I'll, I'll actually provide you with the numbers for uh, hydraulic conductivity and porosity, you're going to determine the predicted groundwater velocity in centimeters per minute, right? Uh, and uh, we're going to do this between wells three and four uh, using this die, right? So what I'm going to do is if you notice here, I have put a nice line, right? This is exactly five centimeters from well three to this line, right? Now we're going to time how long it takes this die once I inject it to get from well three to this line, right? And then that we can determine from there the groundwater flow velocity. That is too much. Okay, all right, ready? So grab your timers, and when I say go, start counting, and then I'll tell you stop when I, I uh, at that five centimeters. Ready? One, two, three, go. All right. Now you can see the red in there, right? And once again, we're watching it spread. We're waiting for it to get to this line right here, right? That is our five centimeter line. But notice it doesn't travel directly from well three straight over to well four, right? First it drops down. Why? Because groundwater flows via gravity as well. Right. Even farther down, and I would say right about now, the very first traces of red are heading that. So turn your timer off right now. 
All right, so now you have a time and a distance, right? Divide those two and you will get how many centimeters per minute, right? And then compare that to the calculated velocity. If you watch this guy, so go continue on here, right? And he will continue, right? And as you notice, right, it drops via gravity. It's not going to drop below this aquitard because that is a confining layer. It can't pass between there, right? So that is uh, the first of the two experiments. The next experiment we are going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be looking at our confined aquifer down here, right? So this lower part, right, our confined aquifer, this aquitard is separating it off from the surface environment. But if we notice, look at the grain size, right? At the top, we have a fairly, fairly thin grain sand, fine grain sandstone, a little bit coarser sand at the, uh, towards the bottom. And then once we get to this uh, confined aquifer, right? we got a pretty coarse grain of sand, right? Now, how do you imagine that that is going to affect the flow velocity, right? And we're gonna do the same experiment, right? As again, as in the experiment, the last one, I have set up from well one in this case, going over to well six, right? We're going to go again, five centimeters. I'm gonna put the die in. So then once I put the die in, uh, I'll say go, you start your timer, and once it gets over here, you stop your timer, right? And then calculate the uh, um, groundwater velocity, right? So, get ready, I'm getting some dye in my tube here. Plenty of dye in my tube, all right? Get him stuck all the way down to the bottom. And ready, on one, two, three, begin, all right? Notice it is moving right towards our five centimeter line, maybe quite a bit quicker, even though than the last one. I'm starting to see some red get over there and on my mark. Ready, set, stop. First traces of red are at that line. Okay, so there's your timing for that second part of the experiment, right.